Working with dates can be challenging for new and established developers. In this tutorial, you will learn how to filter datasets by date and date time fields. To start, I have a new page with a repeater and a few date fields above. Next, you will need to add the CMS. First, let's set up a new collection called Fruits. I am going to use the AI to get some test data started and we will modify it from there. This collection will have a fruit name, image, and a fresh until date. In the collection, click on the three dots to the right of the date field. Notice there is an option to include time in this field. For now, leave it unchecked. Let's update the dates and images to be more meaningful for the demo. Back in the editor, next we will connect the repeater to the CMS and map the fields. Next, click the curly braces to turn on dev mode. Now you will want to give your date elements meaningful IDs so we can use them in the code. I am using date exact, date start, and date end. Next, open your dataset settings. When dev mode is on, you can give your dataset a meaningful ID as well for your code. I am using an ID of dataset fruits. In the page on ready, we will first write code to filter the dataset by the exact date chosen. Using onChange, we will call a function to update the repeater. Inside the function, first set a variable to the value of the selected date. Then import Wix data and we will build a Wix data filter object using EQ as we only want items that are an exact match for the date. Before we apply this filter, let's take a look at what the selected date value looks like. Click Run and select a date to see the output of your console log. Since we only have a date field in our CMS with no time, we need to modify this string to something the filter will understand. Click Edit Site and we are going to use the method toISOString and split at the time, which is represented by a capital T. Then we will take the first part returned at the split. To learn more about date methods, I've left a link to the MDN docs in the description. Now you can set your new filter on your fruits dataset and run the code to see it in action. Next, we will update the code to filter for a date range. When the visitor clicks Start Date, we can use that value to restrict the values that they can pick to only be in the future for the second date picker. So inside the change event, grab the first value, then set the second date picker minimum value equal to that, and enable the picker. Be sure to, that your second date picker is set to disabled on load or some other validation strategy, as you will want the visitor to pick a start date first. Now, when the second picker has a change event, you will fire the update repeater function again. You will need to add some checks in this function to know which filter scenario to run. In the case of this demo, we are going to check if the date exact has a value to decide. If there is no value, we are assuming it is a range filter. Add variables for start and end date. Then in this filter, we will use between. Note that between does not include the number selected, only those truly in between the two selections. For more filter options, you can check the documentation. Run your code to see the range filter in action. Finally, what happens if you want to use time in your date field? Back in the CMS, check the box to include time in our date field, and then update the date in each field where you see the small warning icon. With time now included, our existing filters return nothing. In your code, you will want to remove the ISO method that we added as that removed the time and the filter now requires this entire value. Run the code again and you can see that your filter is now working. 
Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more developer tutorials on Wix Studio.